Jesus said, I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. Welcome to Connecting Lives, a ministry of Sunny Crest Baptist Church located in Marion, Indiana. You know, people in today's world, just like you and I, are seeking to find a sense of importance, meaning, and joy in life. These things come from one source, our Father in Heaven through the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you seeking to be connected to the truth of God's Word? Join with us today in worship and the study of God's Word as our pastor and the fellowship of believers here at Sunnycrest help you to connect personally with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. to see you. Uh, Jim makes comments about me being here a few times, and I remember looking back over those years, first couple times I came, I had two knee surgeries, and it's like, this is a challenge. And then the next time I come, I had uh, uh, multiple eye surgeries, and it's like, oh, I can't see you. So uh, I am grateful how God has worked to help provide healing. I could walk, I could see, and I'm blessed. Uh, you know, we think of our senses, and you, you know, you can mention all those senses. One of the things that I add to that list when I give praise to the Lord, I say, Lord, thank you for mobility, and thank you for memory that I can uh, remember things. And so as I'm here with you, I am grateful that Pastor's given me the opportunity to be with you. So uh, as Pastor's uh, gone today, thank you, uh, Pastor Troy Bishop, for the privilege to be at Santa Cruz. Had a great Sunday school class, and then I had some dear man that I kidded, and I said, uh, Last time I was here, you were sitting up front. I said, uh, uh, I trust I'll see you up front. So he gave me uh, some candy. You don't know I really like mint. And so thank you for that, uh, that, that mint candy. I appreciate it. We're going to be looking at Genesis chapter 3. So if you want to be turning there, our focus will be on Genesis chapter 3 and then Matthew chapter 4. And I'm going to give you a four-point outline. You know, pastors are typically taught, you know, give three points. It's sermon illustration or, you know, something else. Well, you're giving four points today. My granddaughter, when I left uh, her this morning, she says, where are you going, Poppy? He says, I'm going to church. What are you going to do, Poppy? He says, I'm going to preach the word. And she says, does that mean you're going to be singing? I, I said, yes, I'll be singing, but now more people can hear me. You know? So uh, uh, thank you all for uh, uh, leading us in worship. But it's about praising God. If you don't mind, I know you've stood for a little bit, but if you're uh, able and would be willing to stand, in just a minute I'll ask you to stand just as we look at Genesis 3. But I, I'm reminded of being in Walmart uh, this week, getting some pictures about my wife and I, uh, I traveled to a place called Hawaii, Hawaii for her 49th anniversary, and uh, she was getting the pictures developed, and I was talking to the guy, and we started talking about faith, and as we were talking about faith, he was telling me some things about the Old Testament, which basically what he was saying is that he did not believe the Bible was accurate. Well, I want you to know that as somebody that's sitting ready to preach God's Word, I believe that we have in our possession hopefully in our hands, on our phone, the very Word of God. Absolutely trustworthy. When it speaks, you can believe it. We live in a day and time in which people are looking for answers. They're looking for truth. They just don't know where to find it. And I want you to know that uh, having been involved in church life, my first position was a youth pastor 50 years ago. And so, in 50 years, I'm not less convinced about the reliability of the Word of God or about who Jesus is and what God is doing. I'm more convinced. And so, if you would, in honor of the Word of God, would you stand with me as we read these verses that you'll see up on the screen? Um, beginning with Genesis 3, verse 1. 
Now, now the, the serpent, serpent was more subtle than, than any beast, beast of the field, field which, which the Lord God, God had made. made. And, he and he said, said unto the, the woman, woman yea, yea, God, hath God, God said, you shall, shall not eat of every tree of the garden. garden. And the, and the woman, woman said unto the serpent, but we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the, and the serpent, serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. But God did not know that in the day we eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did it eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they, that they were, were naked, naked and, and they, they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And when, and when they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God said to Abram, and said to him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. Would you, Would you pray, pray with me? me? Heavenly, Heavenly Father, you've given, given me the privilege to bring your word this morning. But Father, it's important that people not hear words, but they hear you. And so Father, you know each one that is here this morning. You know their struggles, you know their celebrations, you know any crisis they might have in their life. Would you speak this morning through me your message? That, that people, people might come to know who you are and your purpose for their life. And they might trust you and become lifelong followers of you through your son Jesus. And if they are already followers, may that attraction be even stronger today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. I want to share with you this morning on the theme of be careful. Watch out. Uh, when, when Pastor, Pastor invited, invited me to come, come I said, uh, thank, thank you. And I said, what I'll do is I'll come and spend the night. My son lives here in town, town as a professor at Taylor. And uh, it, it gives me a chance, chance to be with four grandchildren, which uh, I enjoy. Two, four, seven, and nine. So uh, I got, got in yesterday. yesterday. We were planning on taking the boys fishing, fishing, and that didn't work out. As you know, we got this little thing called, called rain yesterday. yesterday. So uh, we, we played in the yard. In the yard, yard. So... Our children live, the grandchildren are right on a very busy street. Some of you would know the house. It used to be the Underground Railroad house, and you know the name of it. And so every now and then I'll have to say to the grandchildren, be careful, because they're playing, one's learning to ride a bike, and I'm a little concerned they're going to get out too close to the highway, and I don't want them hurt. So from time to time, you know, poppy, as I call it, poppy says, be careful, watch out. Well, well that's, that's the thing this morning, based on Genesis 3. We're going to look at it in, in Mark, in Matthew 4. Be, be careful, watch out. out. I, want I want to give you four thoughts, thoughts if you'll write, write these down. down. My, My kids, kids know that I tend, tend to do alliterations. Yeah, you use the same letters and say things. But, but here's, here's the first one. one. Be careful or watch out for distractions from God. For Watch out. out. For distractions from, from God's praises and provisions. I liked it when we got up this morning and we're, we're singing his praise. You know. He's, He's worthy of it, amen. And when, when we sometimes think of praise, we may think of what He's done for us. And in uh, my life, as I mentioned, I'm grateful that I can walk. I had four knee surgeries. I'm grateful I can walk. I've had three eye surgeries. I'm grateful that I can see. Um, I went to my mechanic this week and said, i got two cars, and they're old, and uh, they have 142, almost 200,000 miles on them. I said, can you make these road worthy for me? I've got to come to the end of the day. And so uh, he took the car and uh, got it fixed. And, and uh, did a, a thing that we, that we don't, don't do much, turn the rotors for me. me. And, and uh, uh, nowadays we just replace them, but, uh, you know, he's, he's no, he's, like, I saved money, so he did that. that. And, and it's, it's like, like, I got out of here. here. I got here safe. safe. It's, it's like, like, thank you, Lord. Lord. 
And then and when I get, get in your day, day as, as um, um, uh, a, a Sunday, Sunday school, school class, class, I got, I got to, to hear of a praise for your, your building. building. You're, You're making, making progress, progress on the roof. roof. When, when I, I first started, started coming, coming, you know, you, you had, had that, that damage that was done seven years back. back. And, and so, so praise God for the, the provisions that you give generously. And that, that, that progress is, is, uh, is coming along. along. And then and I, I heard, heard about uh, the daycare and the children that are coming to the daycare. daycare. Where, where I spent eight, eight years as a member of one of our local churches, we had a daycare. And, and we, we were blessed, blessed to have around 40, 40 children. children. And to and see, see those children come in every day and to know what they were going to be taught and how they were going to be loved made it a safe place. Today, let me ask you, for what are you giving praise to God? What would you include in the list of provisions that God has given you? Think about that. Here's a problem that I have. And, and I don't, I don't like, like to admit, admit how bad a problem it is, but I do have this problem. problem. I'm, I'm the type that, that I can, can be blessed with a lot of things, things but think, think about, about what I don't, I don't have. Does, Does that, that make sense? sense? And, and so, so as you look at Adam and Eve, we don't, don't hear about praise from Adam and Eve's, and Eve's lips, lips in these, these early chapters. chapters. One, One time, might you say, say that Adam expressed a praise. praise. When, when God, God created an outmate, brought that, that woman in, he, he kind of gets, gets excited, excited there. there. Praise, praise God, woman. Wow, wow. Thank, thank you, God. God. Where, Where do, do we praise? praise? Where, Where do we celebrate? celebrate? Where, Where do we, we give, give thanks? Adam and Eve. For how, how long were we blessed? God, God created the world. God sustained the world. God, God protected, protected them. them. God fed them. them. But what, what happened? This, this went, went on, on for, for what? what? Days? Years? Years? Decades? Decades? Centuries? Centuries? How long? One day, day the, the enemy, enemy comes along and says, says see, see that tree, tree over there? there? You're not, not to, to eat from that tree. tree. Why, Why is it the, the one, one thing, thing we, we don't have, have can distract us from God's praise. I watch at Christmas, Christmas time. We, we give, give our children things. We give our grandchildren things. things. And, and I, I can pretty, pretty well tell you the reaction when, when, I, when, when Nanny, as my wife is called, when, when Nanny and I give our, our gifts to our, our grandchildren, when, when they get close, when they, they get pajamas, pajamas What's, What's the reaction? reaction? Oh, excited, just, just what I wanted. wanted. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's not how, how they, they respond. When, when they, they get a toy, then they're, they're excited. excited. They, they like, like the toys. toys. They're, they're thankful. They've been taught, taught to be polite. polite. You know, they're, they're thankful, thankful for, for the pajamas, pajamas but they, they really, really like toys. toys. But, but I've also seen that if they, they didn't, didn't get the one on their wish list, list they're, they're not happy. happy. And, and then, then as they're playing, it's amazing, amazing when, when they're playing, playing with one, one then they've got to go to the, the next one. one. It doesn't, it doesn't keep their attention. attention. And, and then, then I've, I've also watched it. it. Oh, you know, four, four children, children, grandchildren. I want what you got. You, got. you, ever, you ever see that? that? And, and so, so I don't understand that, that dynamic, dynamic. But I, I just, just want, want you to, to be aware. aware. Be, be careful. Watch out. From whatever, whatever it is, in each, each one of us has something that distracts us from God's, God's praise. praise. And, and that, that distraction can destroy our life. Because, because whatever, whatever it is that's, that's distracting us can, can get our attention and create such an, an, an attraction that we're, we're going after it no matter what. what. And, and it will destroy us. Am, Am I making sense? sense? Can, Can you, you identify with what I'm saying? saying? Fill, Fill your life with, with praise. praise. Think, Think about, about what God has, has done, done for you. you. Think, Think about, about all the provisions. provisions. When, when my time, time comes and uh, when we, we do, do the funeral, funeral the two, the two songs, songs that at this point in my life, life I've said to my wife, I said, honey, 
I, I like, like the song. song. I, can I can only imagine. imagine. You know, what's, what's it going to be like, like to, to be, be in heaven? heaven? I, I like, like that, that song. song. And then, and then another, another one I said, said son, uh, honey, honey, I said, it's, it's different, different beat, but, but count your many, many blessings. blessings. Name, Name them, them one, one by one. one. I, I am so blessed. My wife, wife and I, I said we just celebrated our 49th anniversary, anniversary uh, a, week a week ago. And, and uh, a lot, lot of people, people don't get to do that. that. And I'm blessed. blessed. So this, this morning, morning, the first point I want you to see is look at your life. Be careful. Watch out for any distraction that will stop you from praising God and thinking of the provisions for your life. The second one that I want you to think about this morning is watch out for any doubts about God's personhood. Doubts about God's personhood and purpose. Who is God? Those that do not follow him have an understanding of who God is that causes them to withdraw from him rather than they get closer. Now, some of you are close to my age, so you may not be in that stage of dating. Now, it's still nice to date your wife. You know, my wife and I, with our anniversary, uh, she said, are you going to take me out to eat? I said, yes. And the, the night, night before, before we went out to eat, we went to Taco, Taco Bell. Bell. And they, they know, know so much at Taco Bell, Bell that I told them, I said, we're, we're not coming to Taco Bell, Bell tomorrow. And I'll, I'll miss you tomorrow. It's our anniversary. And uh, my, my wife said, honey, is it McDonald's? I said, I said no. no. And then we, we have a place we typically go. go but she was in the mood for fish. fish and she's, she's not here today because she's, she decorates, makes cookies, cakes. So she's doing that for her niece, Columbus. So she's there today. So she's missing being with you. So, so we, we went, went out to eat. We enjoyed that. that. Uh, but, but if, if you, you remember your days when you were dating, somebody might have caught your attention and you said, am I interested, interested in that person? And then, and then as you, you spent time, time with that, that person, you said, not interested. And, and some, as, as I've talked to people about who they're, they're married, how did that happen, happen I, find I find it amazing how many times I'll have a man or a woman say to me, says, I wasn't, I wasn't interested in that guy at all, or I wasn't, I wasn't interested, interested in that lady, lady at all. But, but something, something changed, changed over time. time. And, and there, there became an, an attraction and an affection and a relationship. People that do not follow God have an understanding of who God is that does not draw them to God. But the Bible presents a picture of God that shows, shows he is loving, he's caring, he provides. He's, he's an awesome God. And, and so, so when we look, look at the story here, here here's Adam and Eve. The, the enemy, enemy, when he says, look, look at this, this, this fruit over, over here. here. The, the enemy, enemy is really creating a situation in which doubts are placed. God, God, if you really love me, why would you not let, let me have what I want? want? So the, so the question, question about God's personhood comes, comes into play. play. If, if you doubt who God, God is, and you question his personhood, you won't find yourself attracted to him. And that's true in reference to God. It's true in reference to Jesus Christ. His, his purpose. What was God's purpose for Adam and Eve? God wanted someone to share life with him. God doesn't have a need, but God being who he is, God love in essence, love shares. And so here is God wanting to love, so he creates a world in which he can love his creation. But love must have the opportunity to respond. If love must be forced, it's not love. And so here God gives Adam and Eve a choice to trust his character to trust his purpose. So God wanted a creation in which they would be wholly set apart for him, where they would be healthy, where they would be happy. But doubt set in. Look at your life. Let me ask you, where are you on the doubt meter? Do you have doubts about God? Or are you trusting him? 
The third thing that I want you to see as you look at this passage, you know, we can be distracted from God's praises and provisions. We can doubt God's personhood and purpose. And if those things are in place, what you're going to see is that there's going to be deviation from God's plan and protection. Here God had a purpose for Adam and Eve. Well, they didn't listen and stay within that purpose. They ate the fruit. They deviated from what God wanted for them. And when you deviate from God's plan, you're going to miss his protection. One of the sharpest moments I have had with my grandchild, and I hope he doesn't remember it, uh, with one of my grandsons, we were at a playground over where I live in Hamilton, Fairfield, Ohio. As we're leaving the playground, he's running to the street. And as he's running to the street, I grab his arm so that he doesn't run in the street because I saw the car coming. And I caught him off guard, scared him. And I got a little loud with him, to be honest. And he, he was afraid. And so he was withdrawing from me because he didn't know why I grabbed him. And I said, honey, I don't want you out in the street. I don't want you to get hurt. And so that's one of those painful moments that I have of, oh, I'm protecting my child. He didn't understand what he was doing. God will do things in our life that for us may seem painful and scary, but he does it because he loves us. This deviation from God's purpose, plan, protection. When I was growing up, I was raised by my father. I'd see mom on the weekend. Mom had a little dog. And this little dog was a little toy poodle, not 12 inches tall. This dog understood what it meant to do wrong. Mom understood this dog understood what it meant to do wrong. Mom had a little chair. You know, like people put their little dolls on, well, this little chair that was like eight inches off the ground. When that dog did wrong, mom said, go get in your chair. Guess what? I had a chair too. Uh, uh, mine wasn't eight inches. Mine was a little taller. She said, go sit in the corner. And what was funny is that when that dog did wrong and mom was saying, go get in your chair, when the dog did wrong, the dog would not look at mom. You know, it did this number. Okay, you know, I, I'm not looking at you. Yes, I know I've done wrong. Sometimes we're surprised by why people don't come to church. My doctrinal studies was with Tom Rainer at Southern. And we've got all kind of books written on church growth, church revitalization, church health. The reality is, when we do wrong, we hide from God. We run from God. There has been occasions in which I exceed the speed limit. The last time I was in your area, I was up um, another town, and I got in the car and was driving down the road. And I hadn't paid any attention to my driving speed. Somebody comes up behind me with neat flashing lights. And um, uh, I pull over and they say, where are you coming from? Town north of here. I was at the convention center. And um, so he was gracious enough to give me a warning. But you know, when, when you're doing the speed, you don't worry about those flashing lights. But when you're speeding, th they get your attention, you know. Does that make sense? It shouldn't really surprise us that as sinners, rebellious people, rejecting God, questioning his character, his purpose, his plan, his provisions, 
that we avoid those situations in which we encounter God. We want people, when they come to Sunny Crest Baptist Church, we want them to encounter the almighty living God. Amen? Jesus Christ, the living Son of God. So how do we help people? We help them to think through, what is your understanding of who God is, his purpose, his plan? So the enemy created this distraction, caused doubt that led to a deviation from God's plan, don't eat the fruit, and God's protection. The fourth thing that I want you to see is that we need to watch out for departures from God's presence and peace. When you're at odds with somebody, it's sad to say that in church life, being at odds with somebody is one of the leading reasons why churches don't grow. Jesus in John 17, as you'll hear me say from time to time, John 17, Jesus said, may we be one. May they be one as we're one. As the father and son had that unity and got together. The church is to be that way. But in place after place, we can see that we are not one. We are divided. We are at odds with one another. And it creates a situation in which people aren't attracted. They don't want to come. I enjoyed being in the Sunday school class because... One of the things I watch for is where is the laughter? Where is the joy? Where is the praise? Presence. Because Adam and Eve did not listen to God, they doubted his purpose. They rejected his plan. Now what happens as you look at this passage here, they hide from his presence, when God says, where are you? They hid. And their confession was, we're naked. They had been for however long period of time, and it wasn't an issue. But now, in their sinfulness, they hide. But God, in his grace, continues to pursue them. And they miss his Peace. We're living in a world in which peace does not characterize our world. It's turmoil. It's violence. It's chaos. Why? We've missed, just like Adam and Eve missed. We've been distracted. We've listened to doubts. We've deviated. We've departed. Let me take you to, this is the Old Testament. And for a few moments, look with me at how you handle things as we see it in the life of Jesus. Would you turn with me to Mark 4? Or excuse me, I keep saying Mark. Matthew 4. In Matthew 4, and these verses, I believe, are going to be on the screen. You know, this is the story of the temptation. Jesus, 30 years of age, has just been baptized. He's beginning his ministry. In the verse as the Spirit of God led him to a place. And in that place, the enemy attacks. Sometimes we think we're being attacked because we're out of, our will, out of God's will, and that may be true. But I want you to understand, sometimes you can be right in the middle of God's will and be attacked, which was the case for Jesus. Matthew chapter 4. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple 
and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast down thyself, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And again the devil take them up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Adam and Eve shows us how not to handle situations. Jesus shows us how to handle a situation. If you're going to model your life, don't let it be Adam and Eve. Model it after Christ. And may your life not just be a model, but may your life be one in filled with the very presence of the living Son of God. As you say, I give my life to Christ. I trust him to be my Savior. I live to look like him. And so for Jesus, there, the enemy would try to distract, would not succeed. The enemy would try to cause doubts, but would not succeed. The enemy would try to cause a, a de deviation from the will of God. He would not succeed. You remember before Jesus would die, he would say to the Father, not my will be done, but yours be done. He wanted God's will. He would not deviate from God's plan for him to go to the cross to be the Savior of the world. He would not sin because if he sinned, he would not be qualified to be the sacrificial lamb to pay our sin debt in full. God's plan was that he came to seek and to save that which was lost and to give eternal life to as many as would believe in him. Jesus never departed from what God had in store. The only time you might say Jesus did not have peace is when he was dying and he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the situation was he took my sin, your sin, the sin of all humanity upon himself and he died on the cross for us. See, Jesus understood God's plan God's purpose was that we spend eternity with the Father. And God's plan was that in order for that to happen, because we were sinners, we needed a Savior. And Christ would give his life to save us. And those that would believe in him would be saved and have everlasting life and be in his presence, experience his provisions, experience literally the holiness, the health, the happiness that God originally intended for his creation. Folks, We've got the word. We've got the truth. We've got the answers. It's in a book, yes. But more importantly, it's in a person. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father but by me. Let's make him known. Let's share the good news. I'm at uh, McDonald's here this morning. Um, have an office at McDonald's back home. You know, they, they know me, and uh, so I'm usually getting my tea at McDonald's. So I meet this young couple at McDonald's this morning. Long story short, they celebrated their 60th high school reunion. These two guys, and some of them, some of you may know them. Uh, he, one guy worked uh, uh, in the area. One guy was from. Finland. So he comes back and forth, back and forth. 
that school building uh, is long gone now, but 60 years. And as we were talking, uh, one guy was telling me about being Methodist and uh, different things. And I'm thinking, it's neat to have a 60-year-old friendship. And I thought, that's a blessing. Uh, in my case, I'm grateful that I've got a 60-year-old friendship. It's with a person called Jesus Christ. Over 60 years ago, I said, Jesus, I'm sorry I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. I want to live for you. I want to go to heaven. I didn't know a lot, but Jesus answered that prayer. And for over 60 years, I've been privileged to get to know him. Greatest decision I ever made in my life. I hope you've made that decision. Would you pray with me? And as we're praying, would our praise team come? Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus, the Son of God, perfect sacrificial lamb that died at Calvary so that my sin debt could be paid in full, that I could have eternal life. And Father, I thank you for the eternal life that I have. I thank you, Father, for the many that are here that know Jesus, the Savior and Lord. It's possible, Father, that there are those that may hear this message or that are here today that have not made that decision. They might have some doubts. There might be some distractions that are keeping them from Christ. May you work, Holy Spirit, using your word to draw people to the only Savior, and that's Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Order a copy of today's message, call or write the address or phone number on the screen. Ask for your copy by giving the title and tape number of this message. Copies of today's message or any other messages may be ordered for $4 per audio CD, $15 for VHS or DVD. Please include the message title and tape number with your order. This has been Connecting Lives at Sunnycrest Baptist Church. If you live in or plan on visiting the North Central Indiana area, join us at Sunnycrest Baptist Church located in Marion, Indiana. For more information, we invite you to visit us on the internet at www.sunnycrestbaptist.org. Connecting Lives Ministries has the vision of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. Your prayers and support of any kind are greatly appreciated. To contact us, simply call 765 area code 664-3047 or write us today at the address shown on the screen. Until next time, thank you for joining us as we seek to connect lives to our Savior, Jesus Christ.